Assalamualaikum and hello everyone. This is BAT257 Lecture 4. So, in this lecture, uh, as I told you guys before, we are going to check the stability of our retaining wall against overturning and sliding. But this time, we are going to use Rankine's uh, Earth Pressure Theory. In the previous lecture, we used Coulomb's, remember? So, um, in this one, we are going to use Rankine's Earth Pressure Theory. Um, if you take a quick look at how um, this is done, actually, it's basically the same as what we did before. But there are some major differences uh, with Rankine's um, Earth Pressure Theory. Alright, so uh, let's get straight to the point. So this is uh, our retaining wall, okay? And then, um, again, I want to make a note here. This is not in uh, your textbook, which is the principles of geotechnical engineering. It's not in the book. I took it from a different textbook. All right, so all the dimensions are given. And um, if you notice here, we have a sloping backfill at an angle 10 degree. Um, from the horizontal and what else so yeah everything else is given and uh, no groundwater table involved all right so we have to calculate the factors of safety with respect to a overturning b sliding and this um, for this one we have to use Rankine's earth pressure theory and uh, we assume the unit weight of concrete to be 23.58 kilonewton per meter cubed. All right, let's start. As usual, we'll start by calculating the PA. Okay. Uh, so, can you see? Okay, so PA, so we're going to, we are going to calculate it now. Okay, so at Z equals to zero meter, so this is a quick one, everything is zero, we don't have any surcharge. Okay, so the vertical effective stress is zero, the Rankine's uh, active pressure is also zero, and the pore water is also zero. Okay, uh, a quick one. So next one is at Z equals two. So um, please uh, focus on this. This is a bit different from um, from Coulomb's theory. As Z equals to what? Okay, so now our total height of the retaining wall is six plus zero point seven, isn't it? So six point seven, but with Renkin you have to include uh, the height of this small triangle here. See, a small soil triangle over here. So you have to include the height of this triangle. I'll show you. Okay guys, so we have to um, include the height of this small soil triangle. I will highlight it. So this height, see, uh, I highlighted the height in pink. All right, so how to calculate that height is basic um, trigonomet trigonometry, sorry. So we know that this distance is, can you see? So it's 2.6, okay? This distance, okay? The width of the bottom, uh, uh, I mean the width of the um, triangle at the bottom. And we know that, uh, the alpha, this is alpha, so the angle is 10 degree. So how to get this? Hmm? So we can use tangent, isn't it? Okay, so I'm gonna write here. Tangent 10 degree equals to, okay, this is 10. Tangent is x over, x is the one that we want to calculate. Um, this width, isn't it? 2.6. This is basic uh, trigonometry. 
So therefore, x equals to 2.6 tangent 10 degree, and you get, please bear with me, 0 0.458. 0 0.458 meter. So this is this height, okay? This is 0 0.458 meter. All right? So at z equals to, so this must be this height, not only the uh, height of the retaining wall, but this height, which is inclusive of the height of uh, the small soil triangle above the hill. This is hill, okay? So this height. So basically it's 0 0.7 plus 6 plus 0 0.458. It is equals to, at z equals to 7.158 meter. Okay, please focus on this one uh, for Rankin. So now, uh, we will calculate the vertical effective stress equals to gamma h. Gamma is this soil above here, okay, which is 18. 18 times 7.158, so vertical effective stress equals to One hundred and twenty-eight point eight four kilonewton per meter square. Okay, now we move on to Rankine's active earth pressure equals to Ka vertical effective stress, Ka times vertical effective stress, where Ka. How to get this? Ka equals to, remember we have um, a sloping backfill, okay? So um, to obtain the Ka uh, for Rankine's earth pressure theory, you can use a formula, but it's a different formula from the Coulombs, okay? It's a different formula, or you can also use table. But either you use the table or you use the formula, you must get the same value of Ka. All right, so the table is table 13.2, the one that I gave you in PDF format. Okay, please refer to that table. Table 13.2. Okay, I'll write here. Refer table 13.2. So you know that in that table, the first column is alpha. So our alpha is 10. Okay, 10 degree, and our friction angle is 30 degree. So this is soil friction angle. So therefore, our Ka based on that table is, it, it equals to 0 0.3495. Please check this for me, okay? Alpha is 10 degree, and friction angle is 30, so we got Ka equals to 0 0.3495. Okay, check this for me. All right, so therefore, our uh, Rankine's active earth pressure equals to 0 0.3495 times um, vertical effective stress, which is 128.84, and this equals to Okay, this equals to, sorry, 45.03 kilonewton per meter square. And your pore water pressure is straightforward, it's zero. All right, so what's to do next is find the Ka. So you plot um, a graph, okay? So let's do this. Okay guys, so you have to draw this graph, remember? You did this so many times already. Um, 
so uh, the total height is 7.158 so this is um, the Rankine's active um, earth pressure so in order to calculate PA you have to calculate the area under the graph so you just have one area so it's pretty straightforward PA equals to half times the width of the triangle 45 point sorry can you see point um, zero three times the height which is seven point one five eight meter so therefore you got PA equals to you can calculate with me one hundred and sixty one point one six I got this value 161.16 kilonewton per meter all right so what is the next step what is the next step but before that let me show you something okay this is our PA where now where is this located on on the figure okay let's move on to the figure so our PA, please focus over here, please focus. For uh, Rankine's theory, uh, the one with sloping backfill, the location of PA is here. Can you see? Okay. I mean, the direction is parallel to uh, the backfill, okay? Now the backfill uh, is at an angle of 10 degree from the horizontal. So your PA is also the same. Okay, so this is our PA. Okay, this is, sorry, this is our PA. And it is also located at an angle of, I hope you can see, at an angle of 10 degree to the horizontal 10 degree is equal to the alpha so it is basically parallel so this is your PA okay the black pan and this my blue pan is um, the sloping of the backfield so they are parallel with each other okay if if the backfield is horizontal then your PA is also horizontal for Rankin theory okay all right so this is the direction it is located at an angle of 10 degree measured from the horizontal okay so next we got the PA so we have to resolve the same with Coulomb uh, we have to resolve our PA into its components um, I'm going to use red pen to show you the components. So we have PA, just like we, we did with um, Coulomb. So this is PAV, isn't it? So uh, the, the vertical one, the one pointing downward is PAH. P, sorry, I'm sorry, this, I'm so sorry, this is PAH. Okay, sorry. The one pointing to the left is PAH. Okay, I'm sorry, I repeat myself. This is PAH pointing to the left horizontal, while this one pointing downward is PAV. Okay, this is uh, vertical. Okay, I hope you don't you, you you're not confused. This is PAH horizontal, and this one is PAV. All right. So we have to find these two components. How to do this? It's very simple and straightforward. So let's go back to our calculation. Let me draw this again to you so that you can see better. Okay, guys, I draw this for you so that you can see better. PA, so this is the component PAH, horizontal, and PAV vertical and this angle over here is alpha which equals to 10 degree so from here p a h equals to p a cos 10 degree isn't it 
while P A V equals to P A sine 10 degree. And the values are Okay guys, so these are the values. PAH is 158.71 kN per meter. PAV is 27.99 kN per meter. Please check these values for me. So, the next step is to do the table. Remember the table with five columns? Okay, because our first task is to check against overturning. So we have to uh, calculate the resisting moment, remember? And in order to calculate the resisting moments, we have to make the table. So let's draw the table first. Okay guys, so this is the table. Uh, we have five columns, remember? The same with uh, columns theory. We have a uh, number, area, weight per unit length, moment arm from point C and the moment. So the first one, number. Okay, before we start, remember we have to number uh, our sections. Okay, this is another thing that you have to focus. All right, so let's do the numbering. Okay, let's do the numbering. <clears throat> so I'm going to number my section as one, two, three okay with Rankin you have to include the weight of the soil as well weight of the soil where where is the soil so the soil um, above the hill okay so one two three these are retaining wall or concrete so number four is here see this uh, rectangle here this is soil and this is this is also another one. Five. Can you see? All right. So one, two, three, four, five. The order. It doesn't matter. You don't have to worry about that. You can number it as one, two, three, four, five. It doesn't matter. Okay. This is my way of numbering my sections. Okay. I repeat. With ranking, you have to include the weight of the soil above the hill. Where is the hill again? So this is toe. This is the hill. So you have to include the weight of the soil above the hill, which is this one and this one. So I divided this into two sections. This one and that one. Okay? And the rest is the same. So you continue with um, the table. I'm going to show you uh, the first one. Okay, let's do the first one. Okay, for section one. Okay? So it's going to be, I'm going to show you all over the place again. All right, so section one, all right, the area is 0 0.5 times, what is this, six, isn't it? So area is, you write a bit here so that, so that I can, I know where, where did you get the value from. Okay, so 0 0.5 times uh, the height, which is six. So this equals to 3, isn't it? Okay, let me check. Times 6. Yeah, this is 3. Okay. So next is uh, weight per unit length. So this is straightforward. The area you multiply by the unit weight of concrete. Remember, this is concrete. All right. So equals to 3 times unit weight of concrete uh, it is you have to use 23.58 it's given in the uh, in the question 23.58 so you got 70.74 okay can you see all right the next one is moment arm from point C okay remember it acts at the center. Let me draw this for you. So this is the one that we calculated just now. Okay. So this is your weight of concrete of the first section. So the distance is from here to here. Okay. 
the distance um, um, from the centroid to point C. So it is this distance. So basically it's 0 0.7 plus, this one is how much? This one is 0 0.2, okay? This is 0 0.7, okay? From here until here is 0 0.7. And it's given that this is 0 0.5. So therefore, this is 0 0.2. It's not to scale, okay? This is not to scale. Okay, that distance is 0 0.2. So to get this again, 0 0.4, uh, sorry, 0 0.7 plus 0 0.2 plus 0 0.5 divided by 2, okay? So I'll write for you here. 0 0.5 plus Sorry, zero point. I keep saying zero point five. It's zero point seven. I'm sorry, zero point seven plus zero point two plus zero point five divided by two. The answer is one point one five. Okay, so the moment is uh, straightforward. Um, 70.74 times 1.15 you got 81.35 sorry can you see yeah okay you got in order to get this this mul multiply by this so you get this one the moment okay so that's for that's for section one all right so you continue with section two and section three. Okay, this is the same. You continue with section two and section three. I'm going to do this um, quickly. Okay, uh, because it's straightforward. Uh, and then after that, I want to show you section four. All right, because this is soil. Okay, so let me show you section through two and section three quickly. Okay guys, so um, for section 2, I'm going to show you uh, the end result, okay? For section 2, after all this calculation, the moment is 11.74, okay, you can check with your answer. And for section 3, after all this calculation, uh, you'll get 132.04, okay? And then you have to remember that these three sections, they are uh, the retaining wall sections or the concrete sections. Okay, so now we'll move to section four. Section four, so you write down here. So let's get back to our figure. All right, so this is section four. You have to remember that section four is the soil, the soil section above the hill. So that is, uh, I mean, the dimension is, I mean, in order to get uh, area is 2.6 times 6, isn't it? Okay, so let me write down here. Area is 2.6 times the height is 6, and this equals to 15.5. Okay, and to get the uh, the weight per unit length or the third column, you have to multiply by the unit weight. Okay, so fifteen, sorry, fifteen point six. But 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 please remember, not the unit weight of concrete anymore. So this is the unit weight of concrete, twenty three point five eight. Okay, for the fourth for the fourth section, it is a soil section this section. So you have to multiply by the unit weight of soil, which is 18. Okay, so 15.6 times 18 and this equals to 280.8. Okay, 280.8. So what about the moment arm from point C? 
so it's um, straightforward. So this is our section. Okay, if I draw it, sorry, if I draw this, um, force. Okay, it is acting acting this at the centroid of the soil section. So to get the moment arm from point C is uh, 0 0.7 plus 0 0.7 up to here and then for this distance here is 2.6 divided by 2 okay so 0. Point, can you see sorry 0 0.7 plus 0 0.7 plus 2.6 divided by 2 this equals 2 2.7 okay so the distance uh, from point C so uh, in order to get the moment uh, you have to, uh, to just multiply this number with this number so 280.8 times 2.7 it is 758 758.16 okay so that is for um, section 4 now you continue with section 5 the last section and remember to get the weight per unit length you have to multiply by the unit weight of soil because this is soil not concrete okay don't get confused all right so you have to multiply by the unit weight of um, soil all right, so let's do this. Okay, guys, for section five, after all this calculation, the uh, moment, okay, so the moment is 33.8. Okay, please check your answer. And so we're done um, calculating the moment uh, caused by these five sections. One, two, three, uh, four five so there is one more remember there is one more force that uh, will cause your retaining wall to over 10 remember there is one more force I oh, sorry there is one more force that will resist sorry that will resist your retaining wall from overturning okay there is one more force so let's say this pan is uh, the force coming from uh, the soil so PAV is another force uh, that is resisting or menahan okay that is resisting the, re the retaining wall from over overturning so that's why we have to include PAV in our table too okay so we put PAV under column 3 which is weight per unit length Okay, so this is our PAV, which equals to um, 27.99. Sorry, can you see? 27.99. And moment on from point C, I'm sorry, I have to shift back and forth. So, moment on from point C is this distance, okay? So this distance so is 0 0.7 plus 0 0.7 plus 2.6. It is 4, isn't it? 4 meter. So you write here equals to 4 meter. Therefore, your moment is 111.96. Okay. All right. So we're done. Uh, with calculating the resisting moments. So the next one is we have to sum up all the numbers. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Okay, summation of all these numbers down here. Okay, summation of resisting moments. R is for resisting and this equals to... It is these numbers I'm going to highlight in pink. 81.35 this one this one this one this one and that one okay 
So you add up all the numbers and it is equal to it is equals to 1129.05 for the resisting moments. So the next one we will calculate the overturning moment. Okay? M O O is for overturning meaning uh, the force that will cause your retaining wall to over 10 okay and this equals to this is the force that will push uh, your retaining wall BAH this is the only force okay it is pushing your retaining wall and might cause your retaining wall to over 10 all right at point C okay so this is a force BAH BAH times the vertical distance vertical distance from point C and our BAH equals to sorry 158.71 times what is the vertical distance so it is this distance guys okay this distance uh, let me show you okay so it is this distance so how to get this it is remember PA is acting at one third from the height and height here is this total height for Rankin so the height of the retaining wall plus uh, the height of this uh, small soil triangle okay so it is 7.156 meter isn't it the total height okay and this equals to 2.386 2.386 is that right Two. 0.386 meter yes so it is this distance the vertical distance see this is vertical distance from point C all right I'm sorry okay times 2.386 so the overturning moment equals to just bear with me Three hundred and seventy-eight point six eight. Okay, so you got your resisting moments, and you got your overturning moment. So we're almost done with task A. Uh, the sorry, the factor of safety against overturning equals to summation of resisting moment okay divide by overturning moment and this if you do this this will be equal to okay guys our uh, factor of safety against overturning is 2.98 and then it is larger than 2 okay so therefore uh, the dimensions is okay uh, and you can comment uh, by saying something like um, the design is safe against overturning sorry I'm gonna write down here over turning okay so we're done with task A now we move to task B okay task can you see? All right. Toss. Sorry. Okay, guys. So now uh, we will calculate the factor of safety against sliding, and this is um, the same like what we did um, using Coulomb's earth pressure theory. So we assume k1 uh, equals to k2 equals to two two over three, and this is the formula summation v tangent k1 friction angle 2 plus b 
K2, C2 divided by BAH. So this is a BAH is the uh, driving force. Okay, it means uh, the force that is going to uh, push uh, your retaining wall and make it slide along the base. So BAH, okay, uh, for sliding. This force will make your, uh, if it's strong enough, it will make your uh, retaining wall to slide along the base, okay? So let's plug in all the numbers. Right, summation V, where to get it, as we did before. It is from column three, weight per unit length. So you have to add up all these numbers highlighted in green. So, okay, 70.74 plus this, 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 and that. And then you got 470.5. Okay, please check this for me. Okay, so you put in here, this equals to 470.5. Tangent, K1 is 2 over 3 times um, friction angle 2. Our friction angle 2 is 20. Okay. So 20, okay, plus B. B is the width of our retaining wall, which is um, this one, this width, okay, and it equals to four, four meter, okay? Our width or our B is four meter. K2 is also two over three, and cohesion um, two is, Sorry, I have to shift back and forth. Cohesion 2 is 40. All right, so 40, just plug in all the numbers. And our driving force, uh, which is BAH, it equals to 158.71. Okay, so you calculate all of this and you will get the facts, uh, the the value of the factor of safety will be. You'll get one point three seven, the factor of safety against sliding, and this is uh, smaller than one point five. Okay, so you have to write down the commands by saying something like uh, not okay. Uh, the design is not safe against sliding okay so we're done with task b and then we're done uh with uh, with the whole task with this task okay so um as a summary for this calculation um, the factor of safety against overturning is 2.98 and it is larger than 2. So it is okay. It means your dimensions are okay. So the design is safe against overturning. However, when you check the factor of safety against sliding along the base, you, you get uh, 1.37, which is less than 1.5. So this is not okay. So the design is not safe against sliding. Okay, so uh, that's all for uh, the calculation, and um, we are about uh, we are approaching the end of this lecture session, and I am going to do um, a summary for, for you. I'm going to show you the summary um, of uh, this topic, this big topic, which is sorry, which is. Uh, lateral earth pressure okay so let's let's do this together okay i did this for you this is summary uh, i did this table okay um this is from what i can see throughout our lecture session on this topic so uh i divided into uh, two main column columns which is uh, one for the coulomb's theory and the second one is for the Rankine. okay 
the uh, different number one, okay? What's the difference between the two? So for Kulem, uh, if you want to, when you want to check the stability, okay, so you just have to calculate the PA and the weight of concrete only, okay? It is only PA and weight of concrete, okay? So WC is uh, weight of concrete, PA is um, your resultant force. That's for Coulomb, the one that we did in this lecture session. For Rankin, however, I mean the previous lecture session, okay? This is Coulomb, the previous lecture session. This is today's or this lecture session for Rankin. When you want to chat the uh, stability of the retaining wall, you have to um, take all of this into consideration, which is the weight of concrete, WC, the weight of soil above the hill, okay, this portion, as well as the PA. Okay, this is for Rankin. So the difference is, for Rankin, you have to calculate the soil. For Coulomb, you don't have to calculate the soil. That's the first one. I hope it is clear. So, okay, number one. And then let's go to number two. This is about the, uh, the position of, of your... Um, PA okay so we have uh, case one the backfield is horizontal case two the backfield is sloping at an angle alpha to the horizontal for Coulomb uh, for both cases uh, the position of PA is at an angle of Delta prime to the normal see you cannot you cannot see this is a bit Okay, let me let me make it darker. So this is the normal line, okay, for Coulomb. Okay, so for Coulomb, it doesn't matter whether the backfield is horizontal or sloping. This, uh, the direction of PA is at an angle of delta prime to to the normal line. But for Rankin, uh, is straightforward. For Rankin, if the uh, backfield is horizontal then PA is also horizontal so it's parallel parallel or salary okay parallel to the uh, backfield if the backfield is at an angle okay sloping backfield then PA will will do the same okay so if we can see here it is sloping at an angle alpha so when you draw your PA, it is also sloping at an angle alpha to the horizontal. All right, it's okay. I'll give you guys uh, this one, this paper. I mean this paper, a copy of this. Uh, okay, and for the third one for Coulomb, uh, it doesn't matter whether the backfield is horizontal or with an angle. The height is just the height of the retaining wall. Okay, when you want to position your PA, it is one third uh, from the height of your of your retaining wall. So this height, all right. But for Rankin, okay, please focus. This is Rankin. For Rankin, if your backfill is horizontal, then the height is from the ground surface to the bottom of the wall. Okay, but if your backfill is uh, sloping at an angle. Then the height is the total height, which is uh, inclusive of the height of this uh, small soil triangle above the hill. See this height, okay? So this total height, all right? So those are the major differences between um, between Coulomb and, and Rankin. So um, okay, guys, we are actually done with uh, the first big topic, which is the uh, lateral earth pressure. Okay, so I hope that uh, you learned something from this. I hope that you find this topic is interesting and uh, 
please understand the content of uh, all the videos that we have so far. Um, so with the next lecture, we are going to proceed with um, topic two, uh, slope stability. It's a different topic, okay? And um, right, that's all. If you have any queries, if you have any questions, you want to ask something, uh, please uh, feel free to contact me. All right, so thank you for um, listening. Thank you for your time. Uh, stay safe. Roger and out.